Hi, my name is Ada, and I'm from New York. Me and my twin sister Gia were born to two very chaotic parents who fought like Tom and Jerry all the time. And on the very day we were born, they picked up a twin each and decided to make us the best version of themselves. Ada is hungry. She needs milk. Oh, since you chose her, why don't you feed her from your nipples? Yep, dad picked me, and growing up, he taught me the Turkish language because he was from Turkey. And Gia was mom's favorite, so mom taught her Italian because she was from Italy. Although we spoke English at home, that whole language thing kinda became the reason for all the chaos and misunderstandings in the family. Because of mom and dad's fights, I could never get close to mom, and I hated that. So once, when I was eight, I decided to make a card for mom for the new year and asked Gia for help. When mom saw it, she went ballistic. Say una vaca grassa, which meant you're a fat cow. God, you're so rude, Ada, just like your jerk dad. I always knew I made the right choice by picking Gia. I was furious. That witch made me do this. I ran to Gia and pulled her by her hair. Why did you do that to me? Because dad loves you more than me and I hate it. So what? Mom loves you more than me. Just then, Mom came and separated us and said something to Gia in Italian. What did you say? Not your freaking business. Go to your daddy and hug him. But Gia glared at me and spit at my face and another fight broke out. She beat me to it and I got a black eye, but I was so gonna get back at her. The funny thing was about us, Gia and I were identical twins. We both looked so much alike that even our parents couldn't tell us apart and I was gonna use that against her. The next day, I went to school and punched a kid straight in the face. I rule the school. No one dares mess with me. Remember my name, it's Gia. That would land Gia in detention for sure, but my plan kinda backfired when both mom and dad were called to the principal's office, and when they couldn't figure out who it was between us, they started blaming each other for it in front of the principal. Say stupido. Yeah, whatever, same to you back at you. Cosi stupido tu animale. The principal let us off without any punishment because she just wanted to get my parents out of her office. But it's not like they ever stopped. On Thanksgiving dinner, mom served pizza and dad went ballistic. Where's the freaking turkey? Who even makes pizza on Thanksgiving? You stupid woman. Turkey, turkey. Go ask your mother to make you a turkey. And saying that, mom threw a plate at dad, which he avoided, but then dad grabbed the ketchup bottle and pointed it at mom. Don't you dare. This is a designer top. Watch me. And he squeezed out all of the ketchup onto mom's top. Mom shrieked, and soon our dinner table turned into a war zone. Gia and I felt terrible. Mom and dad didn't even care about any happy occasion or us anymore. They just fought all the time. Then one day in the seventh grade, when G and I got back home after school, mom and dad finally dropped the bomb on us. We are getting a divorce. Ada is going to live with her dad in Turkey, and Gia is going to live with me in Italy. What? No, no way. You can't do that. No, mom. No, dad. I can't live without you guys. I want all of us together. Please, don't do this. But they didn't listen to us and said it was final. Later that night, I went to talk to Gia in her room. I thought she might not listen to me, but she hugged me as soon as she saw me. Oh, Ada, I'm so glad you're here. Even though we fight all the time, I can't live without you and dad, sis. We have to do something. What can we do? Our parents just hate us. They're selfish and only think about themselves. Then let's just run away. They'll get busy looking for us, and then they'll forget all about this stupid divorce thing. They'll understand how much we need them. I won't let this happen. I won't let them ruin our lives. We have to stay together no matter what. But mom and dad had already filed for the divorce, and within a week, they even signed the final papers. But then, I had a brilliant idea. I could switch places with Gia and go with mom to Italy. We would tell them about the swap after six months. And when they'd meet again to exchange us, maybe they'd be less angry and realize that they still loved each other. Yes, this was perfect. I immediately told Gia about it and she happily agreed. Soon after, mom and I flew off to Italy and there, mom had a huge place of her own. As soon as we got there, a maid came running and grabbed all our luggage. 
Benvenuta, signorina. And that's when it hit me. I could not understand a word of Italian. And this reminded me of Gia. She was also stuck in Turkey and didn't know a word of Turkish. God knows what kind of trouble she was going through. Mahaba birkach arkek alabilishmiyam. What are you saying, kid? Are you out of your mind? Soon after, mom enrolled me in school. And my first day was a complete mess. The teacher asked me to introduce myself, and I said, Ciao, mi chiamo Gia, siete tutti brutti. Everyone gasped and looked at me like I'd cursed them. All I said was they were nice, but for some reason, none of them would talk to me now. The next day during lunchtime, pizza was being served in the cafeteria, but I noticed there wasn't enough cheese on top. Can I get more cheese on this? The server stared at me like I had asked for her kidney. And dude, this was a clear mistake. Asking for more cheese in Italy is considered super rude, but I didn't know that. Cheese? Vaca grassa? The lady glared at me and jumped over the food counter to attack me. She chased me for a mile around the school until the principal caught us both. She sternly told me off for being rude and said she was going to call my mom later. And I felt like a terrible kid. Mom was already dealing with the divorce, and now I was adding more to her troubles. I thought I'd apologize to her as soon as I got home, but what I saw next shocked me. Mom was having a pool party with her friends, and they were all having the time of their lives. What the crap? Mom, what's going on here? Oh, honey, I'm having so much fun. You should join us. If I knew life without your father would be so amazing, I'd have divorced him before the wedding. I feel like I'm 20 again. Woohoo! What? I thought she'd be missing Dad and me, but she was having a blast. This was so weird and not what I expected. I quickly went to my room and called Gia to tell her how Mom was going completely crazy. But what she told me shocked me even more. Dad was gonna get engaged within a week. This was insane. We had to get Mom and Dad back together soon, by any means possible. The next day, I was all set to break the news to Mom, but what I saw almost gave me a heart attack. She introduced me to a not-so-handsome man as her boyfriend. Ciao, sono Roberto, signorina. And before I could even say anything, they put me in a car and took me shopping with them. But I had to do something to get rid of all this Italian pasta sauce at all costs. When Mom went inside the changing room, I told him to leave her alone. Voglio che tu ami mia madre. Mm. Suddenly, he had tears in his eyes. And he hugged me. What was wrong? Then he took a rose from his pocket and proposed to my mom in the most romantic way possible. Sarai mia, signorina. Mom looked awestruck, and then she said the words that I dreaded the most. Si, lo fero. OMG, what the heck was happening? Our plan was literally falling apart. The next day, I stormed off to school in anger. But in the school corridor, a guy pulled my hand and started flirting with me. Hi, beautiful. Wanna go and get some cheese with me? I'll open factories for you. Ew, he was so gross. And I was so done with kids making fun of me for not knowing the language. I knew a little Italian by now, so I told him to leave me alone. But he didn't, so I slapped him hard. He left and he went to tell the principal some lies that I forced him to kiss me. An hour later, mom barged into the principal's office and she looked raging mad. Your kid has been misbehaving with our staff and been doing inappropriate things to boys. Mom, I didn't. Oh, I know my daughter very well. It's the school that's stupid, and I'm putting her into a better one. We are done here. Oh my god, she was so unpredictable. While driving me back home, I thought Mom would scold me, but instead, she said something that completely shocked me. It's okay, honey. If you're ever in a place where you're unhappy, then you can always move away. Just like I did, Ada. What? Did she just call me by my real name? Mom, you know? Of course I know. You're my child. Really? Well, no. This morning after you left for school, I went to your room and I saw your pink colored undies, which Gia hates. But why did you do this, honey? Imagine everything Gia has been going through there. She doesn't even know the language. We want you guys to get back together. 
but mom didn't say a word to that, and as soon as we reached home, she called dad and told him everything. But dad, like always, wouldn't believe her. I'm not going to fall for your pranks, woman. Do you think I'm a fool? Of course I know it's my daughter. It's Ada. But minutes later, he called her back saying he knew from the beginning it wasn't me. Mom immediately got on a plane with me. When we landed at the airport, I saw Gia and Dad waiting for us outside. I ran towards her and she hugged me as soon as she saw me. I missed you so much, sister. Minutes later, Mom asked Gia to follow her and Dad asked me to come with him. But I had to try one last time. Enough, you guys. We are not going anywhere. We want to live together like a family. Please, can't you do this for us? Yes, I want to live with Ada and Mom. Not like this, where I feel so empty and alone and unloved. I want to be happy. Mom and Dad looked at us in complete surprise. Oh, honey, why would you ever think you're alone? No matter what happens between me and Mom, nothing could ever change the fact that we're your parents and we love you so much. You'll always have both of us. Then why can't we all live together? Because that won't make any of us happy. We wanted to raise you in a happy home with great memories, but living together, we could never give you any of that. And now look at us. We are happy and we can give you the best of the world only if you choose to accept it. Suddenly, I had tears in my eyes. Maybe mom was right. She looked a lot happier and healthier than she ever used to be with dad. And dad, he looked like he was going to explode with joy. And now, the only people fighting against this happiness was me and Gia. This had to stop. I looked at her, and she looked at me. And we knew what the right thing to do was. We agreed to mom and dad's plan, but we decided we weren't going to sacrifice our happiness either. So Gia and I decided to live with mom, and both of us moved back to Italy with her. But we often visited dad and his new family, and we were the happiest. Happiest. Hi, I'm Sakura from Japan. I never met my dad, and I've always just lived with my billionaire mom and my twin sister Yumi. And for as long as I can remember, Yumi has been a crazy, jealous pain in my butt. Once when I was five, mom was so impressed with a painting I'd made, she had it framed. Later that night, I woke up to a sound and I screamed. My favorite doll was covered with paint, and it was hanging by its neck from the ceiling. OMG, <laughs> Yumi was insane, and she just got worse. Anytime I was doing better than her at anything, she'd act out viciously and mom was totally blind to it. But in the ninth grade, Yumi really crossed a line. Mom was hosting a grand party on her new yacht. When I woke up that morning, I shrieked at my reflection. I had a terrible haircut and a mustache drawn on my face. The marker wouldn't even wash off. When I went screaming to mom, she started laughing and said it was just a silly joke. But sweetie, you can't come looking like this to the party. That would be embarrassing for me. I was furious. When they'd left, I snuck into Yumi's room, opened her Facebook, and posted a status. I'm pregnant, everyone. Can't wait to get all round and fat. When Yumi found out later that night, she attacked me in my sleep. Mom came running at the noise and was so mad when she found out what I'd done. My reputation is ruined. I can't live here anymore. Do something, Mom! Next thing I knew, our bags were packed and we were moving to freaking New York. My new school seemed bigger than the White House. And unlike my strict school in Japan, it seemed like everyone could wear or do whatever they wanted here. As we were walking down the corridor, everyone was looking at us and whispering. Suddenly, I heard someone screaming behind me. Hey, wait! Are you the real-life Akko from Luna Academy? OMG, somebody pinch me! Oh yeah, you guys look exactly like anime characters. You're hot. What were they talking about? Whatever was going on, it seemed like we'd just become the princesses of the school in minutes. Yeah, even me. I was reading in the library one day when a cute senior Dylan came and sat next to me. And he just asked me out. That was weird. But I'd heard Yumi say that she had a crush on him. So I said yes. And suddenly, we were the hottest new couple in school. 
I was already imagining us as prom king and queen, and I could see Yumi burning up. A month later, Dylan came to my place one day and immediately pulled me in for a kiss. Happy Valentine's Day, babe. I got a present for you. Oh no, I'd completely forgotten about it. He told me to close my eyes and hold out my hand. A rock? Yeah, cause you rock my world, babe. What'd you get for me? I ran to my drawer and took out a tacky heart necklace I'd had since I was a kid. Cause you stole my heart, babe. And he looked pretty happy. Wow, boys were dumb. A couple of weeks later, it was Dylan's birthday party and I went over to his place all dressed up. When I finally found him in the crowd, I was shocked to see him kissing a girl. Oh my God, the girl was freaking Yumi. I pulled him from the back of his shirt. Hey, why are you kissing her? We're sisters, but we look nothing alike, you jerk. Yumi just grinned at me like a moron and hung on to him even tighter. Why are you getting so worked up? Don't you know this is common here? We date many girls. That's just our culture. Don't make him choose between us, Sakura. You know I'll always win. I charged straight at Dylan and pushed him into the fountain. Then I pounced on Yumi, and we found ourselves rolling around on the ground, pulling each other's hair out. Dylan called security and had me thrown out. Gosh, I couldn't wait to tell mom about her horrible little princess. But when I got home, I was shocked when the servants told me that mom was in the hospital. She'd had a stroke. I rushed to the hospital and mom weakly opened her eyes when she saw me. You me? No, mom. It's me, Sakura. Just listen. I should have told you both sooner. You girls, one of you is adopted. What are you saying, mom? The, the heart necklace. You took it from me as a kid. It has the answer. The necklace? The one I gave to the jerk Dylan? Just as her eyes started to close, the doctor pushed me outside. And a few moments later, they told me she was in a coma. My whole world had suddenly turned upside down. My mom was in a coma? One of us was freaking adopted. Of course, Yumi was devastated by mom's news, but I didn't tell her what mom had said. I had to find out the truth myself first. The next day in school, I found Dylan in the boys' locker room and I told him I wanted my necklace back. Sure, I'll think about it, but only if you give me my kisses back. Dylan, just shut up and give it back or else. Jeez, calm down. I gave that ugly thing to some girl named Melinda. I think she's moved to England now. What? I got so mad. I pounced on him and started pulling his ears. If I don't find the necklace, I swear I will hunt you down and kick your butt. Dylan screamed like a little girl and his buddies had to drag me out. That night, I tracked Melinda down on Instagram and booked my ticket. I left without a word to Yumi and found myself flying across the Atlantic in search of that stupid necklace. When I got to Melinda's place, there was a wedding happening in the garden and the servants said the young miss was getting married. I rushed straight into the ceremony as the couple were exchanging their vows and I yelled, Give me my mom's necklace, Melinda, or your marriage will be doomed. As everyone stared at me, Melinda stepped out from the audience and pulled me aside angrily. Who are you? I don't remember inviting you to my sister's wedding. When I told her everything, she looked at me like I was crazy. I gave that necklace to my maid. She just moved to Scotland, but you can get there by train in a few hours. Oh my God. When I finally reached the address she'd given me, I saw a couple of kids playing outside and one of them was wearing my necklace. I felt terrible for what I was about to do, but I had to. I went up to the little girl and said, your necklace is so lovely. Can I try it? No, leave me alone, Dumbo. So I snatched the necklace and I ran like there were wild dogs chasing me. Finally, I was about to find out the truth. With my heart beating furiously, I opened the locket and what the freaking fish? It was just a picture of mom holding two babies, me and Yumi. What was this supposed to mean? I took out the picture and turned it over. Sakura, born on 18th September. Yumi, adopted two days later. What? Yumi was adopted? This was unbelievable. As the shock wore off, I couldn't help smiling. For a brief minute, I wanted to put this up everywhere on Facebook and Instagram, but then I decided, I wanted to see Yumi's reaction myself. I rushed home on the first flight I could get and barged into the house. 
Oh, Yumi, where are you? I've got a surprise for you. I found her sitting on mom's bed, holding a picture frame and sobbing. She turned around to me and said, What if mom never comes back to us, Sakura? I feel so lost without her. My heart melted and I ran to hug her. She'll be fine. The doctor said she will. And you have me. As Yumi hugged me tight, I decided I wasn't going to tell her what I discovered. It would be devastating, and mom would want me to take care of her, so that's what I was going to do. Yumi and I were getting along better than ever before, but one day when I walked into the cafeteria, I was shocked to see Dylan standing on a table holding a hand out to Yumi. I love you, babe. I know that I've let you down, but is it too late to say sorry now? Yumi took his hand and climbed onto the table, and everyone cheered and clapped as they kissed. I marched over furiously and pulled Dylan to the ground. Hey, jerk, I saw you kissing a girl just yesterday, so get away from my sister. Sakura, are you crazy? You can't treat my boyfriend like that. And I know he kissed someone. He just said he's sorry, okay? He made a mistake. That's a mistake he makes every day. Yumi, I swear, I just want what's best for you. Break up with him. Babe, don't listen to her. She's just jealous. Of what? A stupid jerk? No, Sakura. You're jealous of me. You know everyone loves me more. The kids at school, Dylan, even mom. And before I knew it, the most horrible words slipped out of my mouth. You wish, Yumi. You wish everyone loved you better, but the truth is, you aren't even mom's kid. You're adopted. She only treated you better because she probably felt sorry for your poor orphan butt. With that, I threw the necklace at Yumi's shocked face in front of everyone and stormed out. With my anger pulled off, I realized what a terrible thing I had done. So I rushed home to apologize, but Yumi was nowhere to be found. I checked her Instagram and saw she posted a picture with her friends at a frozen lake behind the school. I grabbed my skates and rushed out. sister at birth, and I turned up as an abandoned baby at the hospital the same day. So she decided to adopt me. Maybe that's why I've always fought you so hard for mom's love. I knew I wasn't her real daughter, and I'm sorry for everything too. You saved my life today. You are my real sister. I'd jump in a thousand lakes and kick a hundred butts for you. And man, am I gonna kick Dylan's butt. I filed a police complaint against Dylan and his friends for leaving my sister in extreme danger, and they were in a world of trouble. A few days later, we got a call from the hospital saying mom was awake. We threw our arms around her the minute we saw her, and I told mom I'd found the answer in the necklace. I always felt you loved Yumi more, and maybe it's true, isn't it? You just got me, but you chose Yumi to be your daughter. Mom took my hand and said tearfully, Sakura. I'm so sorry I made you feel that way. Maybe I felt more protective of Yumi because I never wanted her to feel like she wasn't mine. But I chose to have you both, and I love you just the same. As we all hugged and cried, I knew the three of us were going to be just fine.